Hey everyone, it's Jilly. Today we'll be making chicken enchiladas from scratch. I am so excited to be sharing this recipe because I love homemade enchiladas. If you love them, trust me, you will love this recipe. So let's get started. Let's start by roasting some chicken. I use bone-in chicken breast. You may use store-bought rotisserie chicken if you prefer, but it takes a couple extra minutes to prepare my own, so that's what I did. I drizzled the chicken with a little olive oil seasoned it with salt, pepper, and you want to make sure that you get under the skin and you want to season on both sides. There we go. I, I always use kosher salt except when I'm baking. So I seasoned with salt, pepper, oregano, onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, and very little chili powder. We're going to cook the chicken in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes. Skin side up and you want to make sure that if you're cooking chicken breasts that you leave the skin on so the meat underneath remains nice and moist. You may use chicken thighs if you prefer but I prefer white meat for enchiladas. I drizzled this just a little bit more olive oil. The olive oil will help the skin become nice and crispy and then just pop this in the oven uncovered for about 45 minutes or until fully cooked through. Chicken looks so good. You want to let it cool before you cut into it. I like to shred it. You may dice it if you prefer, completely optional. And then I'm just going to set it aside and show you how I like to make my enchilada sauce. Here I have six ounces of ancho chilies. I've been making this exact recipe for years and I wouldn't dare to change it. You want to remove the stems and the seeds. These chilies have a ton of seeds inside. It's fine if a couple are really stuck to the chilies and you can't remove them easily. I left the couple, but make sure to remove most of the seeds. Look at all those seeds. If you left all those seeds in there, your enchiladas will pretty much be inedible. Now we are going to place the chilies in a pot with water. Let it come up to a boil and then lower the heat and simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes or until they're nice and softened. Here I have some onions and tomatoes that I roughly chopped, a few garlic cloves that I smashed, and now we are going to sear the veggies. We want to get the onions and tomatoes nice and brown, season them with salt and pepper, and cook them for about five minutes on high heat, and then add in the garlic cloves and soften strained chilies. About three years ago, I made a video on shredded beef enchiladas that's available on YouTube. Those are just as delicious as these. I use the same exact recipe for the sauce. And the reason why I refuse to buy store-bought enchilada sauce is because I make enchiladas maybe twice or three times a year. I definitely don't make them often, so therefore when I do make them, I make them completely from scratch. And also there is an amazing Tex-Mex restaurant right by my house that serves incredible enchiladas. So there's no point in ever using canned sauce. Either I make them from scratch or I'll just go to the restaurant by my house. All right, you want to pour in some chicken stock. You may use vegetable stock if you prefer. We are going to cook this mixture for about 15 minutes on medium low heat. You want the veggies to infuse that chicken stock. 15 minutes later, you want to let it cool a bit and then we are going to blend the mixture. And if you'd like to make this today or tomorrow, the exact measurements can be found on my website, cookbyjilly.com. Blend this until nice and smooth. And now let's strain the sauce. Once we're done straining it, we are going to fry the sauce. Add some vegetable oil to a large skillet with high sides and cook the sauce on high heat for a couple minutes, then reduce the heat to low and simmer the sauce for a good 20 minutes. The sauce will also thicken up nicely as it simmers. I know some people use flour to thicken the sauce. I never did. Make sure to season the sauce well with salt. It definitely needs salt. Now let's work on the filling. I added some canned green chilies some chipotle sour cream. All I did was add a tablespoon of chipotle sauce to sour cream, but you may use Mexican crema or just regular sour cream, or you can just leave it out altogether. Some cilantro and cheese, give everything a mix and check for seasoning. If it needs salt, now it's the time to add it. Make sure to fry, grill, or even microwave the corn tortillas. They need to be warm or else they will break as you roll them. Pour some sauce in your casserole, dip the tortillas in the sauce, add the chicken mixture, and roll. Place the seam side down and repeat until you run out of chicken. 
I admit this recipe looks a bit tedious, but if you love to cook and want to stay in on a weekend, invite some friends over and make this. It's so worth it. Of course, you can buy some rotisserie chicken and canned sauce, make this on a Monday after work, and that's fine. I'm pretty sure it will be really yummy, but in that case, you definitely don't need a recipe. Make sure to add some more sauce over the top, some cheese, and now let's place this in a preheated oven at 400 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes uncovered. So I would like to mention that you can make this sauce and freeze it and then use it whenever you're in the mood for some enchiladas. Now you may serve this with some salad or rice and beans, some homemade margaritas, and you've got a party or a fiesta. I've sprinkled some cilantro over the top that's optional, and these are ready to serve. I like a little sour cream on top and now these were fantastic i love them white meat sour cream cheese sauce how can you not enjoy this follow me on instagram i constantly post photos of what i make or eat throughout the week definitely give this recipe a try and i want to thank you all so much for watching